These are very similar to the models used for predicting tomorrow's weather, but now instead of focusing on the weather, we're actually focusing on the long-term statistics of climate and how that changes in response to changes in greenhouse gas concentrations. The projections for sea level rise are generally done from 1990 to the present and they're shown on this graph here. Here's a graph going from 1980 on the left through to 2100 on the right and the projections are shown by this band. The projections at the lower end, which are about 20 centimetres by 2100, are associated with smaller release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, whereas the projections at the upper end, up to about 80 centimetres, or potentially more if there's a larger response from the ice sheets, are associated with larger emissions of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So this is a choice that our society can make between lower emissions and lower sea levels or higher emissions and higher sea levels. So this is now uh, comparing the projections with the observations going from 1970 to 2020. The band here is the same band as in the previous diagram. So the upper end of this band is the line that leads to a sea level rise of 80 centimetres by 2100. The tide gauge observations start off equal to the projections in 1990. The satellite measurements only started in 1993, but we noticed that by 2010, both the in situ and the satellite observations are tracking close to the upper end of the projections, that is the line that leads to 80 centimetres by 2100. So there is a concern here that maybe our current projections are underestimating what future sea level rise could be. Our options for adaptation are basically threefold. Firstly, we can retreat from the coastline, abandon parts of the coastline. This shows an example from the UK where they are actually abandoning parts of the coastline. It's too expensive to protect every portion of our coastline. Secondly, we can accommodate for changing sea levels. Illustrated here is a house essentially built on stilts, allowing sea level to come underneath the house. An example from uh, Bangladesh, this is a storm surge shelter. When a storm surge comes to Bangladesh, people retreat into this shelter, abandoning their homes. And thirdly, we can protect parts of our coastline. We can build a barrier. Netherlands has lived below sea level for a long time now and lived there quite happily, although when storm surges overtop the barriers or the levees fail, then the results can be disastrous. This protection is occurring not only in the, in the Netherlands, but in London. This is a Thames barrage, which protects London from storm surges. It's about a hundred billion pounds of assets protected by this Thames barrage. UK is presently considering how they need to extend the barrage because uh, just a few years ago a storm surge came within centimetres of going over the top of the barrage.